My name is Brendan Jones. Uh, I've been in SES now nearly 20 years. Um, when we first started, uh, we were working out of a little shed. We were using a 1964 X ambulance and uh, oh, there would have been probably about eight of us. We were using all uh, our jaws back in them days were just pump up. They weren't like the ones we got today. We've got all got a beeper. When the beeper goes off, you can check it. Um, you come straight over to the shed, start the vehicles, uh, ring MFS in Adelaide, tell them that uh, you're responding, and then uh, head straight out. On the way out, I had this premonition that it was, it was one of them. When we got to the scene, it was pitch dark. We pulled up, shone the lights on the, off the truck onto the, the vehicle. I stepped out and there was a police officer right by the truck. And when I seen the car, I said, <laughs> I know that car. And the police officer said, Who, whose car is it? He said, well, I said, it's my son's. He said, right, you, uh, you get in the car with me, I'll take you home. Told to go up to the hospital. So I got up there and uh, they had Paul up there by then. Uh, he was unconscious. And uh, they radioed to Flinders to send a flying doctor service down to pick him up. We got to Adelaide about half past seven and uh, we went straight up to the to where Paul was and we waited. About nine o'clock a doctor came in and give it, gave us the news that uh, in his opinion Paul was brain dead. At that stage, my wife collapsed. Uh, things were a bit hectic for a while. After we got ourselves together a bit, I knew Paul was an organ donor. So uh, we decided that uh, with his wishes, look, we'd donate his organs. So uh, then the process went. Uh, they contacted the Organ Donor Society of South Australia and uh, people came in uh, and between that uh, we had time to go and uh, sit by his bedside, talk to him, stroke his hair. Um, we did that for, that was all day Sunday. Sunday afternoon they said that uh, they would uh, send retrieval units from most states to take, take his organs. I just love doing it, just love helping people. Um, it's uh, people I work with. It's just something that I've I've always liked. Uh, I know it's it can be a bit of blood and guts at times, but then on the other hand, you can get someone out and you can say a job well done. Out here, heading towards border town, there would be there'd be ten ten fatalities in the last or eight years. Major area is about six kilometres through, six to eight kilometres through Keith. Um, our main the fatalities. 
the cutters are 70 ton cutters are the, the best you can get for heavy duty rescue uh, these cut and these spread not every SES unit has has the the uh, this size uh, some of them have got the smaller ones we just uh, we're just lucky that we've got the, the larger ones. This one here will open the door up so that we can get the cutters in. Gives, gives the ammo's access to the patient. Uh, if, if they need to get them out sideways, it's okay. But if they've got spinal injuries, we cut the roof. And, and, and we use a board, put down the back, and uh, bring them out backwards. If they come into a tree sideways, uh, doors are pushed right in. Uh, their feet could be trapped. If their feet are trapped, then, then we do a dash roll. We cut here, here, and we push the whole dash forward to uh, get them, uh, get their feet out. Is that yeah, you've you've achieved something. Uh, you've gone out, done the job, and saved a person. And it's yeah. Whereas you can go out there, and you can find fatalities. It's a different kettle of fish. You've got uh, you got bad dreams for a few days afterwards. But it's worth it for that. It is. It is. It's, it's worth it that those pe people have survived. So, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather see that that truck with dust on it not go out. Than, than having to go out on the highway. But that's life.